By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at something that's, for me, truly, truly close to home, close to my earliest days of Magic the Gathering, because we're going to look at two decks completely unsleeved playing against each other. We're only playing with revised cards, and these decks are actually kept in the starter deck boxes, um, actually at my brother's house. So here you can see the revised uh, edition box, a beautiful box still. I also got some boxes that are in a bit of a rougher shape, and uh, this is actually how we used to play Magic, right? You didn't have sleeves at the start. You had penny sleeves. They weren't really popular. They weren't really used as much. And what we would do is we would just open a revised starter deck like this. And then you would probably have like four different colors, all sorts of different mana, right? And you would start to trade like crazy to just try to get the right mana and the right colors. Now this deck, let's take a look at my deck picture. Uh, this deck is actually a blue and a black deck with artifacts. Now, before you get all worried about, oh, you're ruining the cards because you're playing sleeveless, it's a waste, you know, how can you do that? All the cards in this deck, and it's also a rule of this, I don't know, can you call it a format, this unsleeved format, is that the cards need to be in pretty rough shape. They need to be in a poor condition. Maybe you're wondering, what does he mean by that? Well, let me show you a picture and here we go. This is a picture of a card that's in a pretty rough shape, right? Here you can see the Golem, which I think is a beautiful card. I love the flavor text of the Golem. But as you can see, this Golem, you know, has seen some action. So if you want to play uh, with a deck in this format, or at least that's a rule that me and my brother have. Um, I should say my brother and me, right? Turn that around. Anyway, the rule that we have is, okay, you can put whatever revised card in there. They have to be re revised. But they have to be in a poor condition, you know. So, and kind of that rule is uh, is making sure that we basically have the same power level. So I don't have a deck picture of the deck of my uh, brother. I know he's playing with white and with green, also sleeveless, of course. And I'm playing with the this deck blue and uh, uh, black. It's, it's all pretty, you know, pretty standard uh, stuff. And this is kind of the power level uh, that you can expect. So... I really enjoyed playing the games and I recorded them. So I thought, why not share them here with you on the channel? If you enjoyed these games as well, let me know in the comments below and maybe uh, I'll play some more uh, games or record some more of these games for you as well. So let's go to the first game and uh, let's see how I do against the, uh, the white and the green forces of my brother. Let's go. Game number one. Here we go. I'm going to play with a basic swamp passing turn here. And there is a Plains into a Banalish Hero, a 1-1 one, one Bander. So it's a good start for uh, you, Pierre. And oh, there is an Urk Raiders, 2-3, originally from the Arabian Nights. It has to attack every turn. Or actually, you can choose not to attack with it, but then you take 2 damage. There is a Samite Healer uh, on the board here by my opponent. A 1-1 one, one creature that you can tap to prevent a damage to any target. So it can prevent all the damage that I can do with my Timmy's. Ooh, unholy strength, plus two, plus one bonus, a four, four Urk Raiders now. And it's already looking bad here for my opponent. So much pressure, he needs to find some something. Now remember, the Banal Shiro has banding, so I mean, he can band in a huge defense, but he needs some bigger creatures. Okay, unholy armor is gonna make it a one, three. Unholy armor is an enchant creature that gives plus O, plus two. And you can pay an extra white mana to give it a plus O plus one. And then in combination with the Samite Healer, I think he can actually block it. Or he doesn't even need the Samite Healer. So attacking here with the 4-4, four, four, I'm expecting him to block it. And then exactly give the Banalish Hero some extra defense so it turns into a 1-5. So the 1-5 can block the Urk Raiders, which is a 4-4. Four, four. And oh, more pressure on the board. A Juggernaut. A lot of aggression from my side, the Juggernaut being a 5-3, also has to attack every turn. And there is a Banalish Hero. I think that um, Yoop will be able to block, uh, I think, the Juggernaut in a huge band, and that way kind of kill my Juggernaut. Remember that one Banalish Hero is a 1-3, and for every white, he can give it plus O plus 1. What can I do here? Fear and fear means that it cannot be blocked except by artifact creatures or creatures that are also black. 
So this is a big problem for my opponent, and I'm not sure why I'm attacking with the Urk Raiders, actually. And yeah, he blocks the Urk Raiders on the Benelish Hero. He prevents one damage with the Samite Healer from the Juggernaut, so he takes four drops to 12 here. But there's just a lot of pressure that fear is a big problem. He needs a disenchant, but I'm not sure if it's in the deck. There is a forest. Looking at his hand. And just passing turn here. That is pretty deadly with, with five lands there. I mean, maybe he needs this double green for a crawl worm. A crawl worm would, uh, would kind of help at least to, to kill one of the creatures and be a bit more aggressive as well. And here I go, just attacking with both creatures again. So he's going to prevent, he's going to take four damage from the Juggernaut. He's going to block again. And then in my second main, it looks like I'm playing something else. Another Juggernaut, perhaps. Ooh, Phantasmal Forces, a 4-1 Flyer with upkeep of one blue. The problem of the Flyer for my opponent is he doesn't have any Flyers. And he's already on eight. He's so incredibly low needs to find something here maybe a big stream of life that can help him for another turn wall of ice something okay this helps i like this play hurricane he prevents that damage that he's getting from the hurricane i need to add a damage to to myself yeah my opponent is pointing it out now so i'm going to go to 19 here losing that phantasmal forces and that of course is a downside of phantasmal forces that it's, um, it only has that one toughness. So it's a pretty good deal for four mana to get four power, but the one toughness is not all too great. And here you can see that weakness being exploited by my opponent attacking here again. But as long as my Juggernaut is dealing business with that fear on it, I've got nothing to fear myself. So blocking again the, uh, the Urk Raiders, taking the five damage because the Semite is tapped. He's on three. This is not looking good for my opponent. Really, really needs something out. What can he do here? Another forest. Does he have a fog, perhaps? Ooh, there is a disenchant. Wow. Wow, he's going to live another day, and he's all back into this. Because my Urk Raider is a 4-4, but it can just easily be blocked by that one Benelli Shiro with the armor on it. So what can I do? There's Escape Zombies, 2-2 Vanilla Creature. Here I'm attacking again. again, don't want to take the 2 damage, and I have that 2-2 two, two blocker now. Of course I'm on 19, both only have one card in hand. Wow, 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 who's going to win this first game? I didn't see that coming, I thought it was kind of in the clear with my opponent on 3 and that Juggernaut with a fear on it. That Disenchant came right on time, looking at my cards. Oh man, look at my body language, I'm not happy with that card. And attacking with two. This is interesting. What could I have? What could I have in hand here? And he's going in a band. And of course, he's pumping the Banalish. Oh, there's a Death Ward blocking it and then using the Death Ward. He was blocking it in a band, put all the damage on his Banalish. What do I have? Okay, interesting. I think I shouldn't have attacked with both, actually. Probably did that because I wanted to kill one of his creatures, so it's not too bad, but kind of backfired on me with the Death Ward regenerating the Banala Shiro. And there's another Samite Healer. Can my opponent actually stabilize here? If I can find a Flyer, I can just fly over the defenses. Another Phantasmal Forces would be helpful. I have, I believe, three in the main. Attacking right now, blocking on everything. And yeah, I'm going to lose my um, my creature here. And the problem now is that I've got that um, Conservator on the board, so that can prevent some damage. But only it can only prevent two damage, I believe. And I'm now open. Nothing on the board, only one card in hand. All of a sudden, things are looking very bad for me. Yes, my opponent is on three and I'm on 19, but I simply have nothing. Using the, the artifact here to prevent some damage, that means that still three damage is getting through. So four damage dealt, two damage prevented. Or is it just one damage prevented here? I guess it's just one. Okay, it is two damage prevented. I'm gonna drop here to 18. It looks like we're looking something up here. 
Obviously, we don't play with these cards every day. And uh, I must say it's really cool. So just for the people that don't know, the uh, Conservator is four mana to cast and three and tap prevent the loss of up to two life. So you can only prevent the loss of life. You cannot use it to prevent damage on creatures, for example. It's a very limited card. I do really like the art. Uh, but at least it's saving me two damage here. And I'm still an 18, you know. I, I feel I've got options here. And another Urk Raiders. Probably going to be on blocking duty. The interesting thing here is the combo of Conservator and Urk Raiders. Remember, with Urk Raiders, if you don't attack you lose two life, right? And then with the Conservatory, you can prevent the loss of those two life. Not sure if that's possible. I, I think so. Should work. And remember, they deal that damage at the end of your turn, by the way. Ooh, there's a Rod of Ruin. So this is kind of called the Timmy on a Stick. You can tap it and deal one damage to any target. Super annoying. And he's going to attack just with the Pegasus. And I'm going to prevent the loss of life here with the Conservator. And what can I do? I mean, there's not a lot of card draw in both of our decks. so. And now I'm using that little synergy that I talked about. So I'm using my Conservator to prevent the two damage that I get from the Urk Raiders. Because I'm not tapping the Urk Raiders, that's why it deals two damage to me, preventing that damage. A little bit surprised that my opponent is not using the Rod of Ruin. Okay, now he's yeah, now he says it. I forgot the Rod of Ruin. I'm like, I'll take it. Oh, another Conservator. How often do you see a, a game where both players play with Conservator? That's just ridiculous. And now we're untapping again. It's still looking pretty bad for me. But hey, I'm still on 17. There is uh, the glasses of Urza. And I want to look at my opponent's hands. You know, because he's got no cards in hand. So he's just showing me his hands. <laughs> which, is, which is kind of funny. Anyway, um, preventing the damage. But taking a damage from the Rod of Ruin here. So going to 16. And uh, wow. I mean... I was in the driver's seat, but um, I've been out of there for a while now and I'm slowly losing life. I'm definitely behind on board. And there he's attacking again. I, I guess... Uh, of course, he wants to keep his, uh, his creatures uh, at bay just to make sure that he can block the Urk Raiders, that he's not creating any opening. What I need is another Fear. Fear would still work on this board. Another Urk Raiders. For a moment there, I thought it was Fear. And um, I guess I'm saying that Fear would work. On the other hand, Fear is not going to work um, because of those two Semite healers. And this is an interesting situation, right? I've now played up my second Urk Raider. And uh, the problem is, am I going to take four damage next turn? I don't think that's a good decision. So I'm probably just going to attack and lose one of my Urk Raiders. Or am I kind of going to attack with both? Kind of in some kind of last resort style. Like that, I think that second Urk Raider, I don't know why I played it out. Maybe I've got something else in my hand. Yeah, and there I go. I, I'm attacking here. Playing another Swamp. And yeah, he's just he's just killing it here. Uh, blocking it in a band. And uh, I'm going to drop to 12. It's just not looking good for me. Oh, a Thicket Basilisk. Wow, that is a strong creature. 2-4. And uh, if you attack with the thicket, anything that it blocks or uh, becomes blocked by dies. So it's a very strong card. There is an unholy strength. So turning my Urk Raiders into a 4-4. That's not going to... Well, that's going to help in terms of, you know, when he attacks with the thicket, I can block it now and we can trade. That's exactly what he does. I kind of feel like I have to do this. Oh, he can prevent the damage, of course, with Samite Healer. That's what I'm pointing at. Oh, man. I think he's got this in the bag. I'm on seven. Wow, a War Mammoth 3-3 three, three Trampler. Perfect if you can combine that with a Giant Grove. Then all of a sudden you've got a 6-6 six, six Trample creature. I mean, that is pretty powerful. Preventing the damage from the Urk Raiders. And what am I casting here? Oh, <laughs> Unholy Strength. Yeah. 
So now I've got a huge Urk Raiders, uh, but it's on blocking duty. So I'm on six now, another damage from the Rod of Ruin. Rod of Ruin doing a lot of work here for my opponent. Very good card, and here you can see why it's such a good card. Slowly going down in life totals. Attacking now with everything. He knows that I have to block him on six. I have no choice. Wow, look at that. Very cautious. Actually keeping his uh, Banalish hero with the uh, Holy Armor at bay here. Just in case. And yeah, I guess I'm just blocking here at the War Mammoth because it's the most damage. And now we're counting. This is... Oh, Giant Grove. And the game is over. I think the game was already over. Oh, Spell Blast on the Giant Grove. Uh, but he can kill me with that Rod of Rune damage. So I take um, four, five. Okay, I guess it's enough. Oh, of course, also with the with the Thicket. Yeah, it's uh, he can deal seven damage. So that's it. He's winning this game number one. That was just... That was pretty crazy. And I think that Rod of Rune did a lot of work. Uh, I must say, I really enjoy this format. I also just enjoy looking back at the games that I, that I played. Uh, so this was game one. Let's hope I'm more lucky in game number two. Let's take a look. Game number two. Here we go. So uh, my mission is clear, I guess, after that first game. Uh, I need to continue playing aggressive. That's all I can do with Urg Raiders and Juggernauts. And then, I mean, I'm also playing with Timmy's, right? Hoping that I get some Timmy's to maybe finish the job. Looks like my opponent here is taking a mulligan. And uh, let me know if you remember this era of magic, by the way, if you've started playing as well in the revised period. There he goes, drawing his first seven. And if you remember, like, buying your first starter deck... And what that was like. Yeah, there, one card on the bottom. And here we go. And there is a swamp, and, and probably past turn. I don't believe I have any one drops with the swamp, like creatures. There's a Banalish hero, again turn one. So putting the pressure on right from the get-go, but there's that Urk Raiders again from my side. Urk Raiders really good in the early stages of the game, pretty poor in the later phase stages of the game. And there's a Pegasus 1-1 Flyer, also with Banding, so pretty heavy uh, Banding theme in the deck of my opponent. Tacking here with the Urk Raiders, dealing two, he's going to let it go, drop to 18. Makes sense, of course. There is another land attacking with both. I'm going to drop to 18 as well. And there we see another creature, a Pegasus. And here we see a Spell Blast taking care of that. That is pretty good to see. Because all those banning creatures, they tend to get really, really annoying. What I really need is just one of my Protocol Sorcerers to kind of kill the creatures of my opponent here. Unholy Strength, we saw that in Game 1 as well. We're seeing it again. It's a 4-4 now, dealing 4 damage. Tapping three blue. Oh, there's a Timmy. The Timmy I talked about. This is a big problem for my opponent. With the Timmy, I can kill his whole army. Benelish hero and the Pegasus. Of course, he's going to attack with both. What else can he do? He's going to draw, or I'm going to drop to 16. But next turn, I can start pinging off the creatures with the Tim. And playing a Swamp here. Going to attack. So he's going to take four more. He's going to drop to ten. Unless he can do something. Is he going to play a Fog, for example? Playing a Disenchant over the Unholy Strength. That means he only takes two damage. Am I going to play a Juggernaut after this? That would be kind of brutal. Oh, Juggernaut! Oh, man! Oh, oh that's so bad. That's so bad. I'm sorry, uh, Yoop, for doing this to you. Actually, I'm not, but I mean, that's so bad. Pinging the Pegasus here. And then taking on my turn. Yeah, this, this, it, it looks like this game is already pretty much played. I mean, he's on 12, playing a new Unholy Strength, attacking for 9 here. He's got a chum block to Juggernaut, taking 4. He's going to drop to what? To 8? I believe it's going to be 8. Hard to see that second dice, but I believe it says a 5, so he's on 8 now. And, okay, he's going to do a hurricane. Huge hurricane. 
And uh, that's not going to be enough. Then it's my turn. Okay, I guess we're going to finish this. And I'm going to attack here. And that's it. So that is game number two in the pocket for me. And here you can see how important and how powerful the protocol sorcerer is on a board like this. So 1-1. Uh, that means we're going to go to an old decisive game number three. Okay, moving on to the decisive game. 1-1. One, one. Here it goes, all or nothing. And you can just see the importance of, um, of a Timmy or of a Rod of Ruin, just being able to deal one damage. A lot of one toughness creatures in this format. And uh, it's just so powerful. And also in a combat situation, just being able to or heal a point of damage or deal an extra point of damage, it just can be decisive. And drawing my first seven, let's hope I get to keep here. There my opponent goes. Five and seven. Looking at his hand, you can see a forest there. What else? Starting with the plains. And passing turns, so going to draw a card and then take, to go to my first main face, I mean, and play an island. Passing turn, 1-1. One, one. Who's going to win this? Forest, and there is a Pegasus again. The 1-1 one, one flyer with banding. Melissa Benson artwork. Epic card, of course. And will we see another Urk Raiders? Again an Urk Raiders. I think if you're my opponent, you're like, what? Again this Urk Raider, dude? In all three games, I found an Urk Raider turn two. I really cannot complain about that because it's so powerful in turn two. Untapping here, and look at that, my opponent not playing out anything. I think for him, getting to four, maybe playing out a War Mammoth, that would be a perfect scenario, because then he can stop my Urk Raiders, and Urk Raiders is gonna hurt me, or it's gonna kill itself in that scenario. Tapping three, there is a Scafe Zombies 2-2, two -two, a vanilla creature, but it is a zombie, you know. And there is another Pegasus 1-1 one -one Flyer. Interesting. Not attacking, choosing to keep his creatures at bay, of course, because then he can block the scape zombies in the band, and then he can uh, decide how the damage is being um, divided. Oh, again, the Timmy. This is looking a lot like game number two, and game number two didn't end well for my opponent, so am I actually going to win this first unsleeved battle? And there's a Conservator. Ah, that's not really going to cut it. Remember, Conservator is four to cast, three and tap, so he doesn't have three mana to do that, but then it can only prevent up to two life. It cannot prevent any damage dealt to creatures. And there is, oh, two Unholy Strength. Yeah, this is just being mean. Now I'm just being mean. Look at that, attacking with a four, three, and a four, four. That means eight damage here. Is he gonna jump? I guess, I guess he's going, because he's going to die to the Sorcerer anyway, but this is just mean. Four damage here, and he's going to drop to 12. He needs a Miracle. A Wrath of God, for example, but I don't think Wrath of God's in here. Oh, that's pretty powerful. Look at that. That's a Desert Twister. Wow, that is a strong card. Six mana to cast for a Sorcery, and it says Destroy Target Permanent. Destroying the scape zombies, and of course I also lose my unholy strength in the process. Dealing four here, he's going to go down to eight. There is another Urk Raiders, so much pressure on the board, still having my Timmy untapped. So in his end step, I can ping him for one, or I can kill a 1-1 one, one creature if he puts one on the board. He's not going to. Going to go here to seven. Of course, he's not going to use his conservator yet. Wants to use it to prevent the damage from the Urk Raiders. Attacking here with both. That means six damage he can prevent two. Ooh, disenchant on unholy. Preventing two, taking two, going to five. Actually, can I counter it? Oh, spell blast. Ay. That is pretty brutal. Those spell blasts are pretty good to kind of protect your creatures and enchantments. And it looks like this is it. You're gonna untap. This is it winning again. And uh, that means a victory for my deck here, for the Timmy deck. And uh, wow, man, that was, uh, I like these games. They're, 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 they're fun to play. You know, let me know what you think of these games and what you think of my deck, Fearless Timmy. 
Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll put some more games like this uh, on the channel. And um, if you like, if you like what you see, hit that like button. You can also support the channel by becoming a member if you're not subscribed yet. Uh, oh, and you can also become a channel member. That's something entirely different. Again, talking about that stuff, uh, you can also support Timmy Talks by becoming a patron on Patreon. And um, that way you help me continue to do what I do and you help me to develop the channel further. So if you've got something to spare, take a moment to click on the link that's popping up right now and take a look on Timmy's Patreon page. Talking about the Patreon page, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, the amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazink.